Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order at 30. Do we Are have you all ready for yeah. recording, sir? And yes. Zoe, is she online? Or? She can't make it tonight. Okay. Um, so we're recording. There's no obnoxious messages to remove from the screen. Is that correct? I don't see any. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Additions to the agenda. We have a personnel matter, and I wanted to talk about the building in town that we may have to get an estimate to take down. Sure. So I want to get that. I forgot to call you about that. Mm -hmm. Personnel yes. matter and those will be a session at the end is building mm -hmm. removal. Okay. Um, review of minutes, November sixth. Motion to accept the minutes. Three, four minutes. Um, six pages. Oh, what is it? Oh, I see. I had this <laughs> stuck in between, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was amazed that it came out to six pages with an hour and a half long meeting. Yeah. But it was Except, a productive meeting. I would say excessively wordy. But, mm -hmm. um, we have thank a you, motion to accept you, the minutes. Else. Yes, I made the motion. Yes, but we don't have a second at the moment. I'll second it. Oh. But I, I just have one thing that I noticed. Ka Kathleen Janner, her name begins with a C. Oh. Okay, thank you. But otherwise, it's spelled correctly? Yes. Yeah. Any further discussion on the minutes? No. So we, we would the motion would be that we'll accept the minutes with the change. Yeah. 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 Uh no further discussion. Discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it. They do have it. Minutes are passed. Um uh, public comment. Not a, um, well, I'm oh. here on Zoom. This is Renee. And um, I just want to let the group know that I'm here, Renee Carpenter. I'm actually in Southern California, and I, um, I'm i here for two reasons. One uh, having to do with the ARPA money, and one having to do with the Friends of the Winooski River. Should we also introduce why we're here? This is the time to do it. And you guys will no, not. You need to sign in and get it fixed. Okay. But you're here for specific agenda item. Yeah. Yeah. So don't worry about it. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, because you're already on the agenda. Okay. Uh, nobody else is under other business. I don't. Okay. Just grab a chair. Other business. Are you under other business? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. You're not here for specific agenda item. No. <laughs> okay. So, what we'll 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 Yeah. Would you care to introduce yourself? You want me to speak? You ready? Well, uh, we'd like to know who you are. I'm Gregory Chamberlain, actually. Okay, and then you can sign in on the sign sheet. Okay. <laughs> What any further clarification on people's minds? I was just wondering maybe yeah. they should give their full names who's on who's on yeah, the, for the minutes. For the could minutes. we do we get the identities of the people who are online? Ginny Callen, Sue Carey, uh, Renee, I see Ben's phone. Uh, would you care to identify yourself? You're not required to, but it's helpful for the minutes. And apparently not. Eliza, would you care to identify yourself? And the person, uh, yeah, was... I'm just, yeah, go ahead. I'm just here. I'm just here to listen. Um, 
yeah, was curious about the AARP money also. Okay, you don't you don't have to tell us why you're you're here. That's fine. Everybody's welcome as long as they want. It's just for the minutes we'd like to get people's names. So, uh, would you mind giving okay. me your last? Yep, it's Lapaglia. L A P A G L I A. Okay, thank you. And then there's somebody with no name there that I see with a blue shirt and something red in the background behind. Would you care to identify yourself? I have a Sue Carey, I think. Sue Carey. Is that Sue Carey? Okay, okay, very good. Thank you. I, can, I just realized I can actually see the name so Okay. okay. It, it's not always right. Maybe you can it, maybe you can take a screenshot, and then there's somebody waving whose face I can't see. Oh, yeah. Phone. The lighting the lighting in here isn't good. This is Denise Wheeler from okay, Hi. Valley. Yeah. Okay. I, so I think that's everybody except Ben's phone. Okay. And then everybody else here is that <clears throat> uh, sign -in sheet going around? So everyone signed in. So Greg, you can. Uh, say what you have to say. Okay. Under uh, public comment. I uh, talked to someone earlier today, and they said that you come in at this time, and, and what I want to talk about is is we have an issue going on in front of our house is the road actually dumping water underneath our foundations and causing some problems, with major water damage. It's been going on for years, but it's gotten worse this year, especially with all the extra rain. We're looking at a, a, a horrendous amount of repair costs, and it's not going to get done until next year because we don't rain ahead this year. But uh, the issue is, is the highway department is over the years has has made the issue much much worse by raising the grade of the road. Uh, when when Mary, my wife, moved into this property in 1987. The road was even with the bottom of the house. Now, at the, uh, you just put a garage in that's two inches above the old one, and I measured from the, the top corner of the driveway down to the top of the concrete, and it's 31 inches higher. That's a lot of great grade difference. And the water is not being taken away before it hits in front of my yard. If you, anybody here wants to go walk down through the swamp, you can come on down any time because the water coming in from the road is just destroying the property. What road is that? Gould Hill Road. Is that on the hill? Yes. Yeah, I think I went there years ago, maybe with Mike Aaron. When it was where? I think the road foreman that we had uh, 10, maybe 10 years ago. Did he come down and look at Mike mm -hmm. Durand? So that was when they put the culvert in, I believe. Yeah, I think I went down there and looked at right. that at that point. Right. Yeah. It's on the hill. Well, the, 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 the hill used to, to be kind of more of a grade up near the, the, the lanes portion of it. Yeah. And they changed the grade, and it's, like I said, it's come up. It's 31 inches is approximately what I'm believing. It's come up yeah. over the course of 30 years. That's a lot. The worst part of it all is, is that the road is all draining down towards my house. Yeah. And it's caused a tremendous amount of damage. I mean, I we're looking at an estimate of somewhere, we don't know yet, but anywhere from twenty to $50,000 to fix. And then the other part of it is, I don't know if it's going to stay fixed. I really need somebody to to really take this into serious consideration. I mean, I, I got a, a letter that we we put together here, and I'll leave with you. Okay, it's got all of the information on it about what's been going on. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that I that I state what's what's actually been happening. I mean, they just were there today, and they graded the road, and they put ditching in. But they put two swales in. One of them is one that was put in five years ago, and, and they didn't maintain it. Now, another one put in below it. And again, if they don't maintain any of these, nothing's going to happen. I mean, the color that they put in 10 years ago was completely plugged. Well, not completely plugged. It had that much space in it. Okay, okay so you agreed about the, the road for me? Uh, several times. Okay. And he's addressing it? 
he's addressing this, but again, the only other thing I have to, uh, about today's work is I'd really like to have one more swale in so that it maybe it will stop some of the future problems. Okay, so you'd like the road for me to come back? I would like somebody to come back and, and, and just put one more swale in there. Okay, I so it would be beneficial. So I'll come up with a road for them and make okay. a day and look at your property. Okay. Okay. And see if All we right. can do a little bit further. Yeah. To help you out. Okay. I would, I would certainly appreciate it. Okay. We need to know what's, what the town yeah. can and will do. Yeah. And going forward, I mean, I, we're, we're not comfortable. Okay. Yeah. With any of it because it's not been maintained. Yeah. So no. we'll, oh, I'm one of the road commissioners. Okay. I do have a lot of experience with veins and roads. So. You got a set of eyes on it. I'll come up with the road phone. We'll make an appointment. We'll let you know what's coming up. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate it. Do you need Thank you. Thank you. I can get it. You. Probably right on here. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the next item on our agenda is discussion with CV Fiber Town Representative. I believe he's here. Tom Fisher, you have the floor. Talk fast and you're good. <laughs> Actually, you got 10 minutes, so you don't have to talk fast. I guess I'm mean, mostly here just to answer questions. So yeah, I mean, sounds good. I, I will say- um, We did have some questions. In in the last, since the last time I was here, I don't know, six months, 12 months, I'm like, yeah. CV Fiber is changing as an organization. It is oh. going from what it was, a volunteer get together, let's figure out some bylaws kind of organization to now a full-blown business, three full-time employees, we are actively moving this around and there's a lot less volunteer involvement. So I have only what's reported to me by our staff and you know yeah. that kind of change. So well you are the town representative, so you gotta have some knowledge. You gotta have some probably more than we have. <laughs> so I know um we had some questions. Don, you had some questions. Yeah, I think I think this annual report though, um I've read through it a little bit more closely and it seems like it answered most of it. It looks like you have hooked on a number of people. Are are they getting service yet? We do have customers who are actively getting service mm -hmm. paying bills, um, which is great. Uh, yeah. is, I would preemptively say it, it is going slower than expected. Um, the construction side, and, and by construction, I mean putting up poles, making movements of wires on poles, um, putting actual conduit or a strand up and, and putting up um, fiber, all of that is going full bore. We've got seven teams in the field with an eighth possibly on the way. Um, we're just going after it. Um, the slow side is then that last bit of going from there to somebody's house. And that's where we only have, as far as I know, one team. Um, we're being told by uh, Wastefield Champlain Telecom, or uh, Wastefield Champlain Fiber, whatever that name is. They're the ones who are uh, doing that part of it for us, as well as running the business side of the house. Um, and they said they can do roughly seven a week currently, and that pace can maybe creep up a little bit, but they're kind of constrained. So seven is not many. <laughs> if we have, you know, a few hundred to do, it's going to be months before that section gets done. Yeah. Um, it's kind of where we're at right now. So we're trying to figure out ways to speed that up. But we have been hearing, I have been hearing complaints about, hey, I signed up for this months ago. How come we don't have service yet? Yeah. I'm in the exact same boat. I signed up months ago. I don't have service yet. It's just mm -hmm. the nature of the beast right now. Do you have any more questions? No, that's about it. So you mentioned 21 um premises is, is that your total that yeah that changes almost daily so um what, what, what would you anticipate i would still yeah, the top of your head probably up to 30 to 40 by now but um yeah not a ton currently we have construction done for up to i think 1200 premises so that's the what's facing us you know all of them are going to sign up for service we expect right. to take rate of like 40 percent or something okay but that's still 400 or more that it's going to take a while to work through. Mm -hmm. But I think, I mean, we're, we're working on solutions on that. We got to find, you know, cramp another team, get more people out in the field, and uh, go after a factor. So you think you're going to have enough money to finish all this? So last I heard, our first round of grant money was likely going to run out in the middle of next summer, beginning of next summer, right in the middle of the construction season. Mm -hmm. um, and the next round of federal grants is unlikely to come through until the end of summer, possibly into fall. There's still some back and forth on whether or not they can speed that up. And then there's the gap in between. We don't want to have staff 
leave us because they won't just go home. They'll go to South Carolina and start building fiber there or somewhere else. Um, so we are going to have to start um, doing promissory notes, grants, um, yeah. going out to the market, try to get funding so that we can then yeah, keep short, things rolling. Short term. Short term loans. Yeah. Possibly longer term. We know we're going to be funding eventually. So yeah. more just trying to figure out what's the exact sequence that is most beneficial. Now, do you qualify for any low interest loans or you got to pay market rate? There's a couple of low interest loans available yeah. um, through the state. Um, yeah. And yeah, we're we're looking at a number of those. We're also looking at a few other grant opportunities, northern borders and yeah. so just to see if there's other ways to get through this and not go out right. of that long line. But very likely we are probably gonna have to go to Yeah. We've got to keep going. So yeah. Yeah, Scott. What is what's the retention rate? So if the forty percent are those forty percent for the most part staying with with so you are, um, I mean, they've only signed up for a few months. So I doubt right. they would go too far, but uh, the report that came in today uh, had a 100% rating on ease of signing up, 9.3 happiness rating, 8.4 reliability rating out of 10, uh, 4.8 out of 5 for customer service rating. That's mm -hmm. fairly similar. And you're pretty, and you're pretty competitive with, well, it's a new rating of 10, but. Yeah, I mean, I consolidated right there. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Tracing is pretty well on top of what you'll be seeing from the other major groups out there. Um, okay. uh -huh. We are so far seeing higher than expected tier levels. So people are paying for higher level tiers than we anticipated by merging. So if that continues of a great trend, then we would eventually reduce our rates because we don't need to make more than what's needed to keep the mm -hmm. life running. So. Yeah. So if people want to know when their place is eligible for connection, uh, yeah. can they go to a place online and find yeah. out? cdfiber.com. Yeah. Um, we'll get you there. The There is a, a place at the very top that you can put in your address. Mm -hmm. And if you are not yet being served, it will tell you a suggestion of when you might be or that we're coming in your area. If you are in an area that can have service, then there's a sign up for more information. And if you're in an area that can like have service today, I think there's like a, this is the process to get started on that. So, but, um, so we sometimes we do that. I think the easiest thing is to check out the map somewhere halfway down the page, there's a little map feature and in there, there's a toggle where you can send your current status and then it will change everybody's house on the entire map to some icon that indicate they have service, mm -hmm. it's coming or whatever. You can kind of see by like, region what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep it up. All right. Yeah, thank you for coming in. Yeah. yeah. Happy I, to. I don't mean to cut you short, but we got a full agenda and some of these things are gonna run over. <laughs> All right. All right. Good luck. All yeah, right. Thank, thank you, Thomas. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. appreciate it. Yeah. Gina, could I just enlist your help in keeping track of the various folks who sign in there and between yeah. the two of us, maybe we'll get most get of them. them. Get them. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Next item on our agenda, consideration of contributions to East Montpelier nonprofits. And we've got some people here that represent various nonprofits. Um, is there an order that we should consider the request or we'll just start with number one? Who is, who is number one? I don't see any, any illumination in that. <laughs> What's that? Let's go with the first one. Go with the first one. Who wants to be first? No, it's a tw Twin Valleys, right? Okay, Twin Valleys. It's, okay, let's go with Twin Valley. Pile of paper. In the pile of paper. Yes. Right. Twin Valley. I think that's Denise Wheeler. Yes. Hi there. How are you all? Hey, Very Denise. well. Yourself? Good. Good. So thank okay. you for your time tonight. Um, I sent in the estimate that we received for paving the parking lot um, over a year ago now. And at that time, it was close to $40,000. And we all know that prices of everything have gone up. Um, so we don't have a new estimate, but I imagine that it's gone up quite a bit. Um, I don't, I'm sure you're all familiar where we're located on Route 2. And if you're not, I would encourage you to drive by or drive in and see the parking lot. We have a lot of folks that have walkers or wheelchairs or crutches to get into the building. We have built a new ramp 
with a covered a covered ramp because before it wasn't covered and the ramp itself was pretty weird, worn torn. Um, we would like to, to now, we've been wanting to do this for several years to pave the parking lot so that it's more easily accessible and less dangerous for the folks coming into the building. Um, so we are here to request, as my letter stated, $50,000 of ARPA money to be able to get this done. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll try to answer them. And if I can't, I can get back to you. Okay. Questions? Sure. Um, when you say if, if we were not able to, um, to grant can you, you the phone. Can you tell me who's talking? Oh, I'm sorry, Scott Hess. Hi, I'm a, there, Scott. I'm a member of the select board. Hi. Um, obviously, we have limited ARPA funds. Um, if you were not, if we were not able to fully fund this fifty thousand, and were able to or decided to fund a portion of it, um, how, how does that how does that fit in? Well, then that's the problem we've had. We've applied for various different grants, and the amount that we need, one of the grants, we would have had to pay half. And we are a very small, tiny nonprofit. We don't charge a membership fee. Everybody is welcome. If you can't afford to pay for your meals on wheels, um, we still deliver food to you. The prices of food costs have skyrocketed as well as building costs. So we would have a really hard time coming up with you know, half or three or a quarter or a third of what it would cost to pave the parking lot. So that's why we're here to ask for ARPA money in hopes that you folks would be able to help us out. And I have a question or something to add to what Denise said. I'm also with the uh, board of directors for Twin Valley Senior Center. And um, if we were only to get part of our request, is there a time limit that we would have to use that money for for the paving? Or could we actually hold it in, a, in an account until we could get enough money to pave what we need to do? That's a good question. Essentially, the select board of the town would make the contribution. And right. That's that's and it. That's it. That's our that's part it. of it, and they they can hold it. They can. That's do, what I thought. Yeah. So, so we don't have. It. I thought you had to use the ARPA funds by a certain date, but so if you've granted the ARPA funds to somebody, is that then out of your hands as far as having to report back to the feds about the money that was? Um... Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I just want to get back. I just got a quick question on what Denise said. She's. She, if there is a grant to pay for half of it or not? No, no, we didn't we didn't end up getting the grant. Okay. So you don't have any grants? No, not point. for the parking lot, no. Okay. All right. Well that answers that question. <laughs> okay. Anybody have more questions for Denise or the other lady? John? No questions? No. No. Carl. Can you do you have any idea when when you'll be making your decision? Uh, soon. So, <laughs> if, if you'd like, if you would like to come and see the parking lot, I will be there on Wednesday and could show you okay. around our treacherous parking lot. We'll definitely keep that in mind. Okay. And we'll make decision soon. I mean, we're in the process of over the next few months having to allocate all the opera money. Is that? Well, the ARPA money fairly well, ask me within by, by the end of right. next year. It's really the end of next year. Right. We but, need to make decisions. Yeah. We're not going to delay things a year. No, no, we're not going to delay the Okay. Correct. Good to know. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, so let's move to the next applicant the trails. The trails. Trails? I can, I can speak to the trails. Yes, Mary. Uh, you got my. Uh, yep description of our project. Yeah. We have um right many or I don't know how many of you have visited the um uh, Mallory Brook Trail, but it um it goes from Johnson Road, previously went from Johnson Road to Cherry Tree Hill Road 
um, with a bridge across Mallory Brook. The bridge was built in um, you know, single digit, 2008, I think, or 2005. And by the BYCC, it was built with um, uh, hemlock timbers um, as a truss bridge 40 feet across to, to bridge the river. The, after 10 years, the hemlock um, expired, which is the expected lifetime. And the bridge, um, we spent some time trying to rebuild and uh, uh, came up with uh, the decision to reroute our trail and um, have people just cross it by low water times and by rock hopping across the river. Um, we've had a lot of water <laughs> in the last year. And uh, basically it's, it, 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 in a year like this, people were not able to cross the river. Um, so it basically cut our, our, uh, our trail system. The ultimate goal is to make a circle throughout the town. Connects Montpelier over at the rec field, you know, down on Route 12 all the way up to Haggett Road, down to uh, Route 2 um, through the U U32, connects to the Cross Vermont Trail. We are very close to making the circle. Um, the Mallory Brook Bridge is a dead end. Um, and over the past few years, we the newest piece that we've added to the trail system is the at the Bobolink Farm, we've been able to extend the trail from Cherry Tree Hill to the Bobolink property. It's um, Carol and Bruce, uh, Carol Dixon and Bruce Howlett. Um, they gave us permission to continue across their pro property, which also required a stream crossing. The bridge that we built there this fall um, is steel I-beams, uh, uh, the black locust decking, cedar rails. It's a beautiful bridge. You can see a picture if anybody else wants to see what it looks like. I have one here I can hand around. Um, and uh, another uh, town resident, Josh Ryan, um, built it with his company, contributed uh, his labor, his machinery. The, the uh, trails board paid for um, the materials, except for the cedar rails, which were donated by Colin Blackwell. Yeah. Um, and in building the bridge, Josh felt that, and with Alan, um, in agreement, Alan Serrano is at the end of this row here, who has been our major trail builder um, uh, this year. And their opinion was that this same design could work on the Mallory Brook. And uh, so, you know, we scrambled to get Josh out there with Alan and to find a location that would be appropriate to cross. We got permission from Chris Pratt, who owns the property. Um, there's a, you know, there's a uh, permanent easement for public access across his property. That, and um, we feel that this is the right time to put that bridge in. Um, Josh is willing to do it and could schedule it in next year. So we uh, we found <clears throat> leading up to building that bridge, we were trying to get money from the um, Recreation Trails Program. We, have, we put in a big effort to apply for a grant during COVID. It was 2021 um, grant year. There were a million grant applications. Um, and we ranked like number nine out of the top eight that could get funding. Mm -hmm. Then there was another round um, of Vorak money um, that we applied for as well. And we just couldn't compete. We had a, you know, a, a half mile or quarter mile trail with a bridge. Um, many of the other projects were fully accessible, um, handicap access trails and walkways. Anyway, what we're finding, which I think probably the uh, Twin Valley is finding too, that grants are very competitive. And we are a volunteer organization. Um, Sharon is not here, but she is uh, 
new to our board, Sharon. Oh. Uh, I'm, I'm on Zoom. Oh, good. You are there. Do you want to speak? Yeah, I'm to... sorry. I have a little person in the house and I couldn't leave. <laughs> but yeah, um, go ahead. I can I can speak on behalf of the statewide if that's helpful. Yes, if you'd like to use more, um, uh, you know, better understanding of what it's like for a volunteer organization to apply for a grant, competing with organizations that have in-house grant writers. Um, Sherry can tell you about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to. Um, I serve uh, as the program manager for the Vermont Trails and Greenways Council, which is a statewide organization <clears throat> um, that speaks on behalf of all of the trails organizations in the state, whether they be small volunteer-led ones like East Montpelier Trails uh, or bigger trail organizations like Green Mountain Club and Catamount Trail Association. So, uh, yes, I am very closely tied with the funding, um, not in terms of making it easy for anyone to get, but um, advertising and supporting um, funding sources and technical resources to trails organizations. And as Mary said, it's a competitive field out there. Um, and state grants, federal grants tend to be quite onerous in terms of what's required um, in the application materials. So an opportunity like this is rare and wonderful um, and hard to get. It's not something that's available in every town um, without going through hours and hours and hours of applications that, that again are hard for a volunteer led group like East Montpelier Trails to do. It's easier to find, and this isn't easy either, but it's easier to find the volunteer work to do the fun stuff where you get cider donuts on a fall day to to do the trail building instead of the grant writing side. So kudos to the trails um, for having attempted to get those grants and come so close. Um, and uh, thank you to the, the town for having this fund be one that we can apply for. Oh, yes. Right. Okay. Yeah, you two have two parts. Yeah. Got yeah. It. And, you know, as we, there's more than two projects that we have on our docket, but um, these are the two that are most ready to move ahead. Um, the second one being the replacement of the boardwalk on mm -hmm. Sparrow Farm. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, you know, coming up. It, it may happen next summer, it may take longer, um, but uh, that's what we have in our sites. And that's 4,200? That's the 4,200. 4, yeah. And that's just for materials. Yeah. Um, because we can use um, volunteer labor yeah. for that. And the, the other bridge requires a lot more um, professional labor. But and, that's the 14.5? Yeah. And that includes, that's everything? That's included, okay. yeah. It's okay. you know we we have some funding so yeah. if it runs over right um, we can we can cover if it's like five thousand more we yeah we manage so you get about five thousand from the town yeah four thousand four thousand right yeah. and you still have some of that money we still have some money. okay yeah yeah we did spend um, about ten thousand between. Um, on the bottling bridge. The bottling bridge yeah. and other projects that we had. And that was money you saved. That was. Right. Yeah. But you still have some money. We were hoping to get that paid for with a grant, or at least half. Yeah. But mm -hmm. So you we, still have some money that. in the till. So we do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Around 4000 oh, no, We have more than that. Yeah. Oh, you have more than that? Yeah. We have, we have the Esther Salmi money, which is um, restricted. It's in a certificate of deposit, and uh, we're only use, supposed to use that for trail acquisition. Okay. But yeah. we have probably, I, I, I actually can dig out the number. I think we have uh, about 6000 in cash in the operating account. Yeah, I'm just wondering, you know, if we give you some money, like you have a like question. Right, plus. the same thing. If so we give you 10000 can you do the bridge? Yeah, yeah. We, we have some extra resources. Right. So, you know, we may have to try to spread this money out. So we're trying to figure out how to spread it out in an equitable way to make these projects possible. So that's kind of what, my question. Yes. Yes. We would, yeah, if we got 
the bridge funding that yeah. would really yeah uh, we can we can manage the others uh, right but we, and, and no it, it's a fantastic project mm -hmm. so it is well worthy of some funding we just we're talking uh, about we're talking about the bridge nine nine thousand dollars. Um, right, fourteen, 14 um, five. Oh, the bridge is fourteen, and yeah, then the yeah, other fourteen five. So, yeah. but that includes that includes also the not the bridge, not the forty two hundred. Okay. It's yes, fourteen yes, five yes, for this yes, bridge. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah, thank you. So forty two hundred. We replace the. Yeah, I'm sure you're familiar okay. with that. It's not far from your house. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know the Sparrow Film Chair very well. Any more questions for Mary or? Okay, I don't think so. And we have contact information, so if we've got questions, we can ask mm -hmm. and we'll call you or email you or something mm -hmm. like that. Yep. I think we're good on that one. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Next one's all together now. Yes, sir. Right. Yes. I'll come up here so I can actually see you guys. Oh, good. Sure. Janice Warrington and um, I. We've been reading about you in the paper. <laughs> they did well. I thought they gave me a good voice. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've owned all together now on Cherry Tree Hill for since 2004. And the beautiful 1800 farmhouse has been a uh, home to long term residents, some of them who are here. And um, it houses currently two businesses my art tile business and the nonprofit that's asking for this funds. The nonprofit runs our summer camp programs. It runs seasonal celebrations that uh, we've been hosting in Montpelier for, for 30 years now. I have some information I can share on that about you, about the who we serve here in East Montpelier as well as the Central Mont community. Um, we provide a, a unique arts cultural opportunity to our community. We also host at our property seasonal uh, winter and summer solstice celebrations. I can say at least a hundred people come. It used to be very big, but COVID brought those down numbers down. But we we offer a lot of things for free for our community, like the solstice celebrations, and we have performances and fireworks, and it's a way to celebrate community. Um, I want to share some statistics from our nonprofit that and the good work that we do that is vital. So we're asking for funds. Um, as you know, maybe many of you know, the Department of Fire Safety has decided to um, apply the most stringent fire codes to our building. We've been in compliance since 2009, and we had to have regular inspections. Um, that changed 2019. We did our best effort to negotiate with them a timeline and what was possible for our 1800 farmhouse. I don't need to go into those details unless you'd like, but we finally came up with a plan forward. What's the code required for what we're doing now, which is affordable housing for residents and these two businesses. <clears throat> um, the property's currently owned, it, but we, um, by co-housing a uh, condominium structure LLC. And uh, that the building is deeded to the co-housing LLC. The nonprofit is one of the long-term tenants in that building. And to maintain that building and the security of the nonprofit's activity there and the residents, we need to do upgrades. We need to improve, do uh, a boiler, that's $30,000. We need to do some fire, wall separate separation in the basement and egress windows. So those are the three projects that the fire department of fire safety are asking us to do. And um, they're applying pressure to have that done sooner than later. And we're an organization that, you know, we're the workers and the organizers, like many small businesses in central Vermont. And so, um, having a grant writer and administration to oversee um, a larger organization. We are not. Um, so coming to you for support is really wonderful. Um, let me give you some statistics and I can uh, email you the, um, at the what I just received from my administrative assistant. So, um, excuse me, this is, okay. So we host nine weeks of summer camps and this year, 
we had over 120 campers attend, and those are not repeat students. Those are nine weeks of summer camps with 25 children, and that, you know, each week. And so that was 120 campers. We raised $6,500 for our summer camp scholarship fund this year, which subsidized summer camp fees for low income and BIPOC, which is, um, you know, uh, BIPOC campers. We also raised funds to pay our, all the expenses for the BIPOC English language learner camp. It was a middle school camp that was run by Beth Miller from, Plan excuse me, yeah, from Planting Hope. We raised enough money that all 19 of the campers could attend entirely for free and also be fed lunch. We employ three administrative staff year round. Two of us occupy the building, plus an additional 10 summer camp, seasonal summer camp teachers. So we do employ people in our community. Uh, we Our seasonal events, Ice on Fire this year, 2020, Three February, we raised $2,700 in ticket sales and donations with approximately 1,200 people attending. Well, Species Day is something we've been organizing. It's a free event in Montpelier, tracks at least six, 700 people a, a year. Um, we do Enchanted Forest in collaboration with the Montpelier Parks. We do Ice and Fire in collaboration with Montpelier Parks. And we sold um, over 1,000 tickets in October. Now, I also want to say that we all of our programs have continued through COVID. Summer camp went on through COVID. Um, our seasonal celebrations altered, but we successfully offered these community events through COVID. You know, so we're committed to keeping our community intact. And we work with children and, and adults of all ages. Let me see what else is here to share with you. We also hold art classes and skill building workshops. Um, this year we held a stone masonry cellar building workshop. So the fundraising this year, our general fund raised $1,500 so far. And we did start a GoFundMe a week ago for this building upgrades. And we've already received $7,000 mm -hmm. in less than two weeks. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of community support, I know. There are some people here maybe who want to speak on our behalf. Um, I'm happy to take questions. Oh, thank you. Um, so how long have you been a nonprofit? The nonprofit has been around since, it was originally called Kids Fest. It was started by families in Central Vermont. Uh, Onion River Arts Council was born out of that. I joined the board in 96 and then it, I basically have been a member, been a, a major holder of that nonprofit organization since '96. We changed its name to All Together Now in 2019 because it matched what uh, how what the work we were doing and the name we were using. So, so it's been a nonprofit for 20 odd years. Yeah, mostly okay. a small nonprofit. It was family, you know, a volunteer board. It's still, of course, a volunteer board. Um, they hired a director for a while when I first started you know, work, you know, having them or knowing about them. Um, for many years, every, we were volunteer staff organizing these events. We, um, and now we've grown, as you can see, to have administrative st staff, a functioning website, you know, hiring teachers, uh, uh, expanding our programs. And um, the building is vital to us being able to continue these programs and to, to lose the building now to have it shut down endangers four people who live there and uh, as i said several businesses successful businesses can i ask you i just was wondering i was just looking at the cost for heating for the Boy. well our grade how much how many square feet of heated space do you have the entire building that includes a full basement is 5100 square feet so i can't break that down for you that's but, close enough yeah and um Currently, there's two boilers, and there's one that's smaller and newer. The other one's old and is still functioning, but doesn't meet code. And my plumber has said, you know, take several thousand dollars just probably to get it up to code, but really it needs to be replaced. And um, we will be putting it in a boiler room, a firewall boiler room. Code boiler. 
So that boiler would end up heating the entire place as opposed to having the, the two or three other various boilers? Well, um, or heaters? Uh, my plumber said he's considering whether to keep two boilers <coughs> or have just one run the whole house. So he hasn't made that decision, but I think $30,000 was the estimate for replacing the boiler that needs to be replaced. And still so, have two. What? And then you still have two. Well, we have um, one that needs to be replaced. So I'm like, yeah, I know, I get it. So we have one that heats just the south side of the building, just two rooms, the upstairs room and the downstairs room. And then the bigger boiler runs everything else. We also do have a few space heaters in the building. Mm -hmm. well, Oops. Any more questions, John? No, I just I, I just think that where the um where the uh, fire marshals are coming from um is they're probably looking at you haven't looked at your building as a public building in the past and now they are and the requirements for egress is a requirement even in new residential home development uh, construction now so mm -hmm. that's that's expected mm -hmm. I, I think that the boiler costs are kind of expensive I mean for thirty thousand dollars that's a big boiler. It's a big place. I mean, that was the estimate he gave me. Yeah. That's labor and uh, replacement of the boiler. Okay. And anyway, I don't want to get into the depths of that. Right. I, mean, like, okay. I just I just kind of want to understand why it was so costly. The, he, two years ago, he told me it was going to be $25,000 or so. Right. I understand that part of it. <laughs> we're all faced with that. But yeah. yeah I, know. I was like, okay, where are we going to find that? Right. You know, and so that's why we still have the functioning old boiler. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Bob? Or oh, oh, oh. Uh, this lady here. Yeah. Would I be able to speak in support of their if, if you keep it fairly short? Okay. Yeah. I, I just wanted to bring to people's attention the economic contribution that all together now has provided over the years. So previously they were running a daycare there. Yeah. Uh, very successful one that my children attended. Um, and because of the that being there and also my kids go to the summer camp there for every year that it's been offered. Um, I, and just as an example of kind of community economics. So I went to nursing school because I could be able to put my kids into daycare. Um, Paul is my neighbor supported me with a loan to do that so that I could go to nursing school. And now I work in the community looking after generations well, basically the elder generation in home health. Yeah. So it's the the economic um, spread yeah. of that organization is a lot bigger than you might yeah. think. Okay. Chuck? Yeah, so I've been to a lot of the celebrations at All Together Now over the years, and it's a, a wonderful community resource in, in many ways. Um, this is different than some of the other proposals that we've gotten, and I'm, I'm wondering if you could help us understand the case to use uh, public funds uh, for a nonprofit that's a long-term tenant at a place that is not owned by the nonprofit uh, when the funds would be going into you know not into something the nonprofit doesn't own. Uh, so maybe you can tell us more about the percentage of uses of the facilities by the ten the people who live there, the residents and uh, the nonprofits activities and your tile business. Sure. Um, let me say that without the building and the infrastructure, these programs wouldn't exist. The nonprofit needs a location for our summer camps, mm -hmm. needs locations for the workshops that we do in preparation for these celebrations, mm -hmm. you know, I often these workshops are donation only to come build things mm -hmm. for these events. Um, the so it's vital. The building's vital to the nonprofit success and continuance. Um, the building is currently owned by the co-housing LLC, so it's a corporation that's also committed to community cohabitation and building community together. So um, it's a building that serves the community it, and it serves the residents. And part of our, our values is about that we, uh, that people and community can interact 
together. So the residents living there. The residents each have, a, the second floor is bedrooms and all residents, there's an office that we share. Uh, downstairs is uh, been the, the, my, the uh, my business and the no longer, you know, preschool. I'm looking at that space now as being able to expand some of our programs for the nonprofit can take, will have space and opportunity to use those spaces now for offering more workshops, enrichment projects for families. So we could offer music for families or different kinds of classes, which our permit allows when we got our PV permit or plan for the community arts center it offers us the opportunity to offer events and classes and workshops and after school programs. So we can expand into the building on the second floor, the first floor. So the entire first floor would be occupied by nonprofit activities. And then the basement is half, you know, the furnace room and residential storage and then my place studios. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And you say that the nonprofit is a long-term tenant there, and that's obviously a, a an excellent description of the past. Uh, what sort of institutionalized commitments do you have to that tenancy continuing into the future? Do you have contracts to that effect? Oh well, um, yeah. I mean, they, they right currently now hold a five-year lease, and I would like y yes, I extend extend intend to extend that for sure. Yeah, extend it. Extend okay. Extend it. Yeah. Okay. And then on the um, the boiler, is this an oil boiler? No, it's a propane. A propane boiler. And then okay. I did talk, call Efficiency Vermont about a pellet stove, and they were like, really, no, my advice to you is to just get another propane burner because we have propane uh, hot water. We have, the house is so large that heat pumps, we'd have to have two or three, and still su supplemental heat. Right. And so I talked to, again, our plumber about the boiler being wood chips, and he said they're unreliable, and we would have to have an oil, we'd have to have a gas backup right. to make sure the building wouldn't freeze anyway. So the most uh, efficient thing to do is to replace it with another propane boiler. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and, and, you know, just to say in terms of I hear how much money I hear, all these beautiful causes and you're here probably for that too, right? You know, um, if, you know, with the crowdfunding, I mean, I think $30,000 is a good chunk that would get us that furnace and it would show the Department of Fire Safety that we are doing solid work. The egress windows, I've already put a deposit down, I already have a contractor willing to do that. Have some, so I can, you know, that, we can, we've got money, we are just fundraised and that just after a week. So mm -hmm. I think Good. we can get more public support financially as well. Good. Well, thank you for anticipating that question that one of us was going to ask, <laughs> ask you and for anticipating where I was going with the, the boiler question, because I, I do have questions in 2023 about putting public funds into more fossil fuel infrastructure. Yeah, well, you, you know, but you've looked at the alternative. I did. And yeah. all the professionals have said not a wise idea for a building. Okay. regrettably at this point, you know. Yeah. So are you done, Carl? I am. Thank okay, you. I think there's somebody else. Renee. Oh, Renee. 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 I'm going to sit down. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Renee, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have something you. to say thank about you. all together now? Yeah, thank you for recognizing my digital hand. Um, I just want to speak to... Um, I think the phrase Carl used is that their situation is different from other people's situation, which um, I think is an important point to honor because we talk a lot about honoring diversity in the community. And this is an organization that has extended itself to fill in the cracks where current social infrastructure uh, is very weak. So in terms, I think I heard Janice talk about how they raise money so that everybody can participate. They are fully inclusive in the community of all people. They, um, they run earth-based programs. Their education programs are land-based and nobody really has addressed the issues of food security and um, 
uh, visioning for new structural paradigms into the future. One of the, the programs that they have hosted for uh, at least a couple of years in a row pre-pandemic was uh, the Village Building Convergence, where there was a weekend of workshops where experts in the field taught people in the community how to use alternative designs, how to use, uh, I'll use the phrase regenerative agricultural methods, although that term hadn't yet been coined yet. Um, and so I just wanted to speak to what hasn't yet been addressed about the remarkable nature of the All Together Now program and paradigm. The one other thing I really want to bring up, um, and this is just me talking as a person, um, the founding director of the preschool, Ellen Leonard, was a very close family friend of mine, and uh, as has Janice been. Uh, and uh, her passing over the summer, if you think about probate and you think about how long it takes to settle legal issues that happen when um, a seminal person passes beyond the grief and all of the feelings of personal loss and her being the primary director and teacher for the preschool when it was there. And I just feel like that should be publicly acknowledged that some of the, um, I'll just call it functional duress around um, replacing the boiler, moving forward, raising more money, keeping a um, very vital series of social programs that have Literally, I haven't seen the statistics. I think Janice said she would send the data to you if you're interested, but literally hundreds of families have been supported through one crisis or another so they can go back to work, so that they can retrain by the programs at All Together Now. And I just felt like I personally needed to add that to the conversation. So thank you for giving me space to do so. Thank you, Renee. Um, I have another question, actually. Okay. It's a practical question. Uh, we we solicited proposals from nonprofits. This is getting back to, to that issue. Uh, would we need to funnel the funds through altogether now? Even I don't know who would be making the purchase of the boiler. I assume it's the LLC that would be well, purchasing the, the boiler. How, I, how would that work? I, as a nonprofit organization, we can gift money to uh, something that meets our mission, which is what would, you know, the building meets the mission, this community art center. Um, so the the um, nonprofit can can actually pay the bills and become, from my understanding. I got to confirm that with my accountant, mm -hmm. but I we have been a fiscal agent for other projects mm -hmm. where then we pay out the labor and the materials and retain a 10% for administrative responsibilities. That's my understanding. And we've done that legally in the past. Mm -hmm. So that's how, how I'm going to approach this. Mm -hmm. And I'll just confirm it with my um, accountant. But we, as I said, that's my understanding of how the funds can be distributed as a gift. Okay. Do, do you have any special insights into that with your conversations with VLCT or regional That's planning? A unique situation. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. I mean, there is conversation that the building could be co uh, owned at some point by the nonprofit, but that's too, I can't speak right. to that now. Yeah, yeah. It becomes complicated. Yeah, it does become complicated. Right. And again, that particular issue is tied up with and related to the passing of the original founder and co-owner of the building. It just is a transitional time for the property. And it, my guess is it'll take at least a couple of years to resolve the, um, the issues due to the, that loss. 
So not to cut you short. But we do have one more request, I believe. And we only have five minutes left. So does anybody have any more pertinent short questions for Janice and company? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate it. Uh, so the last request that I know of is from the Historical Society. And do we have representatives to speak to this request from the Historical Society? I see it was signed by Sandal Keaton and Hobie Guyon. It speaks for itself, clearly. Yeah, I read it, but um, I don't see anybody else going to speak to it or mm -hmm. no. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, nice to have folks here to talk little, about it. Absolutely. Yeah, I thought there was someone here. That's why I cut Janice off, but I didn't mean to do that. Um, <laughs> Can you tell us what they're asking for? Um, they're asking for some cabinets. Two hybrid display cabinets, two inserted steps for stage, one portable ramp for stage access, continuous expense as it's an estimate. Is, is for the four corners. Yes, four yeah. corners. Yeah. Primarily, they want to be able to yeah, exhibit so, three-dimensional so objects. East Locally, okay. with so all, all this information. Yeah. 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 We go to the yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Any more questions about the historical society request, or any more questions for anybody else that is applying for? Thank you. Got yes, thirty seconds left. I just want to. We say do. My sure. kids went all together. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'd like to say something. Sure. Sure. Um, I've lived it all together now since uh, December of 2013. And uh, aside from the the great benefit of the, the community, uh, to the community, uh, I personally have been given a place to live that's affordable. And, you know, there's affordable housing. And then there's affordable housing. A lot of affordable housing is not affordable to low, low income people. And um, I have really appreciated that and uh, admired the, the commitment to, uh, to to provide affordable housing. And could you say your name for the record, please? Arrow. Arrow Vino. No. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think we're. I think we're done with this agenda item, so to speak. Thank you for thank you for your thanks, thanks for coming here. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you guys don't want to hang around and see the rest of the meeting. Yeah. Better. <laughs> it might go quicker. <laughs> we maybe go quicker. <laughs> I'm going with that. <laughs> Come on, we got Michelle next. You know, that would be okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to leave it before Michelle gives her presentation. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, folks. Well, thank yeah. You yeah. Yeah. We'll be in touch. Yeah. 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 Okay. Next item on the agenda is discussion with friends of Winooski, parcel of Coburn Road and U.S. Route Two. So. So. So right. this item. Um, Actually, I think Carl knows more about it than I do. I don't know, know much. I don't know much. That, but there was an email sent to you and I. Yes. That said you had made a request or something I, about that parcel being used for flood mitigation. No, yeah. no. We've had a discussion about other matters related to the town. Oh. But yeah. No. No, I just um so I'm Michelle Braun, the director okay. of right. Minuski. So that you would send the email. I did. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's famous. <laughs> we see her email. Said you were going to be, email involved. And you said you were gonna be gone or something. Or something, something. No? Okay. okay. <laughs> you said you weren't available. Okay. What's that? Oh, so I think you're mixing me. Yeah. Do you want me to start at the beginning? Doesn't matter. Please, sure. <laughs> but you know, we pretend we don't know anything. Okay. But don't pretend too much. <laughs> okay. I'll keep it. Um, yeah. So, sure. um, so there was a big flood this summer. Oh, there was a big flood. Mm -hmm. where, where was this? 
around here. In Vermont? Yeah. They're just picking really? on you. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was a big that, one. Yeah, made us real busy. Yeah. Doing river work. Yeah. Um, and one place that we got called to um to look at uh flood damage and response recovery. So, sorry, because I just yep. don't have your position. I'm oh, sorry, I'm the executive director of Friends of the Winooski River. Okay. Okay, very good. Yep. And so um, we got called to uh, Pear Winsel and Karen Meisner's place, which is also known as the old Tofani place on the corner there. Brick house. Brick house, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were terribly flooded, of course. Um, they had the river kind of tried to punch through um, instead of going around the oxbow. And you probably know that, you know, the river's really dynamic through that whole portion. Mm -hmm. Um, and Pear was interested in the idea of, um, and is interested in the idea of, they, they have like eight or nine acres there that they've been leasing to Fairmont Farms for haying. And he would like to discontinue the haying and let that land go back to um, floodplain forest. But was also interested in potential floodplain reconnection there, and how do you help the river be, you know, more um, in better equilibrium, and um, where are there opportunities for um, for it to for it to spread out in a less damaging way? So I went out there with um, an engineer and a representative from DEC and a representative from NRCS to talk about all different kinds of stuff that we might be able to do to help out on that property. Um, so we're gonna do um, an alternatives analysis looking at opportunities there. And he's also considering uh, CREP, program, CREP enrollment to um, recoup the lost income from discontinuing hanging and potentially a river corridor easement there. And then I know, um, the, some of the same folks, not including me, talked to Bev Levine about similar, you know, or having similar conversations with Bev about her property just downstream. Um, and that brought to our attention the VTrans property across the road from Heron Karen's. And um, we know from past conversations and current conversations that VTrans would like to unload that property. They don't want it. They have no plans for it. And so the reason that I contacted you guys was to find out whether the town would have any openness to receiving and owning that property. Right. And um, you may have reasons to do that or not do that. But that was where, that was the point at which I reached out to you guys was to start that conversation yep. about whether the town was interested in, yep. in being the owner of that property. Right. Um, part of the reason that it would be beneficial for the town to be the owner of that property is because um, the funding that we usually use to do, um, to do a lot of that kind of restoration work is uh, state clean water funds, and we can't use those funds on VTrans property. Gotcha. But if the town owned the property, then we could use state clean water funds. So that was where that okay. that interest came from. Um, and so essentially that property in our minds um, was a piece of the puzzle of what could be done to make that whole section of river more resilient. Mm -hmm. Um, so that would encompass all the that the entire pond area there. Or? This is something that um, I received today. That oh, from um, through Renee Carpenter. Okay. Um, from so, so, um, friends of Coburn Pond. Actually, I can't take full credit for that. That's Renee speaking on Zoom. So it I came from our little organization. Yeah, I've never seen this before. Um, but what I can say is just yeah. that, um, yeah, our um, partner at NRCS calculated that there's an opportunity to um, 
to engage about five and a half acres there um, as floodplain. And um, the idea was to um, hire an engineer to do the same kind of alternatives analysis, feasibility um, exploration that we're doing across the road. Um, collect data, look at what it says. Is it possible to open this? The berm there is pretty, really substantial. It's like old earthwork from the original quarry yeah. and it has mature trees on it. So, you know, it's no small thing to open that up. Um, but we would be looking at, you know, is there a point at which you can open it that the river can access and a point at which you can open it that the river can exit? Mm -hmm. And can we do that without, um, you know, impairing the pond? Can we, in fact, potentially enhance the pond in the course of the project? Um, so these were the things that we were talking about. So that's 78 acres, it says here. Yeah, the whole property is, mm -hmm. but it go, it's all big. It, but is that what the to, town would be yeah. owning? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We've, We've been, been expecting to sell it, then. We've been expecting for years to be asked to buy it. But we did, we did own it at one point. Oh, no, we had the opportunity to buy it yeah. very yeah. cheaply right. at one point. Right, and we, we, we missed that. It was right there before I got on the site. Yes, yes. 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 Uh, okay. So, is this a good time for me? I, I want to let Michelle finish, but then I'd like to enhance the conversation because there's a lot of information missing. Well, well let's let you finish. You'd like to finish? Oh, I would love to. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, so I had a conversation with Renee, um, which made it clear that um, Friends of Coburn Pond is not open to this yeah. Um, data collection or conversation or anything yeah. happening on that parcel. Mm -hmm. And I have tons of work to do. So I don't really want to engage in a, you know, oppositional situation like that. Okay. So we're just so in, in, we are, uh, yeah. information gathering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Uh, you gave a reason why we would, we would want to own, why would we not want to own this? What is there a liability? What is the negative for us receiving at a for one penny yeah. to to own this? I mean, Renee may have some comments. But... I do. Okay. That there's a long history, you know, like you're okay. dropping into you're not, you're not, you don't have the floor yet. Let's see. Okay. I'll wait. But but I can answer that question. Okay. What's what's that? Scott wants to finish. I don't know. Um so that's not an analysis that I've done. Um, to my mind, I I see great recreational potential on that. You know, you all have a wonderful trail network already heard from those guys, and I think that that property has a lot of um, a lot of potential. But you obviously would want to talk to your attorney about yeah, other things. Well, yeah, well, I guess we'll we'll hear an opinion in a minute, but there's yeah. always two sides of. Trying the, to find out why we would not. The trans desire not to own it has to do with their inability to do anything with it um, because but of it, Act 250. It was a situation. mitigation site. They knew that yeah, that's right. a mitigation site. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Because what they did when they redid Route 2 is they went through some wetland. Mm -hmm. So to do that, you have to have an offset. Mm -hmm. So they used that site as a mitigation to offset the wetlands that they went through when they just. Mm -hmm. Too. So there has that was a reason that VCANs owned that. I see. Yeah. At yeah. that point. Now, since we've talked about the price a couple of times, uh, do we have any idea how much VTrans would want? Okay. Well, there, no, there, yeah, there is a cost. cost. Maybe not. But the only the 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 information that I have from VTrans is we would like to unload it. So maybe maybe <laughs> would be, maybe it would be a bit. They're, 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 they have a past history of giving property to town. So they, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So now you have the floor, Renee, for a few more minutes. Great. Thank you. So I will be as brief as I can. S some members of the select board maybe know the history, some do not. Friends of Coburn Pond evolved from uh, the mitigation project that began with hearings at the town in 2005. I was brought on board by another citizens group that wanted to protect the swimming hole. And I became a party to the Act 250 
that protected the swimming hole, which at that time was mentioned 24 times in the town plan. And I do want to say that the t while the town was unwilling to put in any time or financial resources, the town supported the Act 250 process that protected the six acre swimming hole as a statutory party, both the select board and the planning commission signed off on every legal motion that the um, Citizens Alliance that was supporting the party status for Act 250. So the town has already been an active party in protecting the swimming hole. That project took four arduous years to work with VTRANS on the permit to protect the swimming hole. And the end result, after a lot of time and money, was that they were able to construct wetlands at the south end of the site. And that's what that map is about. Um, before I give the floor to Thomas to describe very succinctly why Friends of Coburn Pond, there are two main reasons why Friends of Coburn Pond can't support any further investigation to the site. One is that anything that is done on that site will continue to compromise the water quality and the existing use of the swimming hole, which is protected by Act 250. The other reason is the berm is already, already has four places which are below the 10 year flood level. The site was designed to invite the river onto the site and then let it hold into the site and seep back down. So it already is functioning to the highest possible degree without supposedly without impairing the water quality and the ecosystems of the six acre swimming hole. In addition to swish, swimming, it's been also a very important place for fishing. And despite all the shutdowns around the pandemic and then post flood, there are, have still been a lot of people who go and fish. So <clears throat> it's, it's great to have ideas in a person's mind, but for decades, the site has been gone over by multiple engineers maximizing the um, floodwater potential at the same time protecting the swimming hole. And if I seem oppositional, I've apologized to Michelle because like I said, it's like stirring up the hornet's nest for me of these issues because VTRANS did violate the permit they excavated into the shoreline at the far south end of the pond, and they created an outlet where none was. Um, it compromises the ecosystem right around spawning season for the fish by creating an open water body that covers the entire site in the spring. It also, and this is in my points, it also limits uh, the supposedly protected snowmobile use because it has turned the south end of the property into an open water body for large portions of um, late winter into the spring. So the five, the only five acres that does not already flood in, um, in an extensive rain event were, are protected by Act 250 as open meadow. And they sit right above the entrance to the pond. And to lower that, 
would both violate the agreement that they have with the abutting neighbor to the north, including the aesthetics, which are protected by Act 250. And it also would compromise the water quality of the swimming holes. So this has been a really difficult issue for me because I absolutely support the baseline concepts that Friends of the Winooski and all of the other um, ecologically minded wetlands, flood mitigation activities are going on. I would support that tremendously. So some of you know that I live in the old Coburn family farmhouse, have for almost four years. And um, I have been connected to that pond for almost 40 years now. Um, and the watershed that comes down from the Kingsbury branch. It joins the Winooski River just north and east of the pond. And that entire area was underwater. I, can, I, I want to work with the people like Michelle, like um, the two folks that came out and did a walk with um, Bev Levine's son, on the property to see what can be done uh, to mitigate as much as possible the flooding. Um, and there are solutions that will be more effective and more uh, impactful directly to the river right in that neighborhood. So I'd love to work on that. Um, and the final thing that I want to say is with regard to the town owning the property, this would be about the fourth or fifth time that this discussion has come to the town since the 1980s. Every time it has been discussed, the town has not wanted the liability of managing the recreation the swimming, the fishing, et cetera, of that property. And Friends of Coburn Pond, which is which evolved from the initial Citizens Alliance that supported the Act 250 process, we were sidelined by the pandemic and then again by the flood and VTrans could just as easily transfer the ownership of the pond to us who have been managing the property throughout the pandemic and throughout the time. And if you would, wanted to have a whole hearing on this, that would be great. I don't wanna take up a lot of time, but I will say that everybody in the neighborhood, while nothing is perfect, um, we actually, worked with the Friends of the Winooski this past fall and uh, jumped on board with our group to clean up the post-flood while they had called for a post-flood cleanup of the river uh, for Plainfield. And so Friends of Coburn Pond jumped on board in alliance with that project and we uh, cleaned out the brush from across the entire, I mean, we'd been working on cleaning it up since the flood, but on that day, we had enough resources gathered to clean this huge amount of brush that was blocking the entrance. There were, I don't know what it was that was dead in there, got cleaned out and, and you know, like, so we have a history of keeping the site clean, of managing at least some of the um, social issues that come up when you have um, an open recreation area. And so we want to be considered in this conversation. We don't want to be excluded from the conversation. And we think it's very important that the history 
be brought into the foreground rather than going over and over and over the same thing time and again. Okay. So I don't want to interrupt you, Renee, but we're running way over. I'm done. Okay. Well, thank you. Do uh, you have anything else to say? Because we didn't mean this to be a long, protracted discussion, but we wondered what was going on. Yep. So and Gina said you would be curious. You would be curious about the work in the area generally. Right. In the yeah. Area. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. We're, so we're working on. It. <laughs> okay. Well, if I can add one other thing, on the other side of the river, on the east side of the river, are uh, woodlands, wetlands, beaver territory. I mean, there's a lot over there, and. It is all protected. It is all under conservation easements. Okay. All right. Kind of making an argument for me to say well, this should stay with VTrans then. <laughs> okay, so we haven't made any de de decisions. We just have gathered some information. And so we're going to move on yeah. with everyone's permission because we are running late and we have people waiting. Well, Super. Thank, thank you for coming in. Thank you for giving us the information. Really yeah. appreciate it. Let me know if yeah. you have. Any other yes. questions or want updates? Or yes, that? yeah, we we really appreciate it because I was really curious about the whole thing and you've answered a lot of questions. And, and thank and, you, Renee, for your And answer. I think we have some information that, you know, we may reach out and, okay. and get more. Okay? Yep, thank but thanks. You. Yep. Right. Okay, so the next item, I'm sorry to everyone on the Capital Improvement uh, Committee that are here to report. So, um, <clears throat> The next item is presentation FY, FY 2025 Capital Improvement Committee Plan. And I believe Ed is tuning in for that. He's the chair. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, yeah. And then Scott's the assistant chair. No, no. <laughs> oh, he's on it. Oh, he's on it. That's right. So is he. Oh, so is oh. John. So <laughs> what? I, I think <laughs> so. Which one of you? Who's like not to, on this committee? Yeah, I mean, holy cow! So Gina's on it. Well, I, 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 I can talk about it, but it's not much to talk about. So you know, that's very good. Yeah, you it's it's quick and easy. Uh, I will keep it short, so we, maybe you can catch up on your agenda. But yeah. we, we proposed. Uh, I was very, you know, for uh, a two percent increase. And even ten thousand, which is just about two percent, almost exactly, uh, to the budget. We've added a few yeah. line items over the last couple of years. Some of them were not funded until this one, uh, yeah. just to tweak the budget uh, a little bit to more reality. Uh, that would be technology was added. Uh, we have the server and stuff that just came up, and so that's now um, in there. Well, uh, some money in there. The sidewalks, we had they put a line item in a couple of years ago, but we never funded it. There's some money for the sidewalks we've put in, and we've increased the budget for both buildings, the town garage and the uh, uh, town office. Both of those were slightly underfunded, and both of them are long-term. We're looking to do major upgrades or replacement. So by putting some money away now, a prudent amount, it will reduce the, the cost as you as you move forward. And 2% yeah. is my target is 2% because that's sort of a sustainable growth rate for the yeah. budget. Last year we had nothing because there was other stuff going down. You know, we've had a lot of stuff going on for the last couple of years, mm -hmm. <laughs> such as floods and stuff. But uh, last year was nothing. So 2% this year. Yeah. And that's where we put the money and uh, the rest of the budget remains the same. The budget works pretty well. As laid out, there were certainly some adjustments that uh, we were looking at, and we're going to, you know, continue tweaking it. But we got the got some, uh, like I said, the technology line I think was important to put in there. I think Gina agreed with that. Uh, I noticed that there was nothing in there when I got involved with this years ago. And personally, I thought the sidewalks is sidewalks are a million dollar asset with nothing to cover it. So putting some money towards them, I was also in agreement with. I think it's a reasonable adjustment and very sustainable level. Okay. So basically when you say 2%, it's about 10,000. That it's means 10,000 that... increase. Exactly. Yeah. So that means I have a calculator. Uh, if you want the exact percentage, <laughs> uh, fine. 
It just I, means I think that it's two point oh one one something or other. You can you, you know what the overall budget is. Not. It just means that we're going to put money into that. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, the thing is, you're putting money into it, but you you know the money goes in and out, and you know there's other line items that we have to monitor. The truck that we just bought is listed on our on our budget as a hundred seventy five thousand dollar expense, and the actual expense was two fifty. So yeah. stuff like that is always. You know, well, we didn't we do that. on it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. but there were circumstances about that. So we didn't change any of that, but there were some circumstances. And uh, yeah. if you don't if you don't change it, I know like last year, Scott uh, uh, actually voted against it for the same reason. We're high inflation year. It's it's naive to think that the uh, costs aren't going to go up with, with this stuff. So you need to adjust things as they go up. Yeah. And, and, your, and your budgets on both of the buildings, your capital budget replacement, it's like, I think it totaled like five thousand a year or something. I mean, I, I replaced a chimney that cost me more than that, and that was just building it from the roof up. You know, it's not a lot of money to be putting into commercial buildings. Yeah. So I think by putting some more money in there, it was a, it's the right move. Yeah. Oh, Scott had something. To I was say just going to say it's very conservative. Uh, yeah, it did a really good job. John's insight was really quite valuable. Yeah, and. Okay. Yeah, thank you guys for your work on, on this. There's a lot of a lot of details to look at. Um, I have a question about adding the server to the capital budget. And that seems just intuitively like is that part of the capital budget or not? Maybe well, it is. Could, could, could you explain? Cost. Could you explain what, what I, I the can, I can definitely so, explain. Can I, can I ask my question, please? Um, yes. could you explain what criteria you use in deciding? whether something is um, worth including in the capital budget in terms of uh, its cost or how often it comes up or what, whatever you use. I think that, I think if you read our thing, it's $5,000 with useful life, which is the standard practice. I think the server was about 20, but you sort of have to look at technology cost as a whole because there's a server and then computers and everything. So the, the technology, the server's in there as a separate line item, but I think we put the actual thousand dollars in it for technology. That's uh, not a lot. <laughs> That's uh, not going to cover the technology cost. First question is: Is this a capital cost. budget item? Right. Absolutely. That, that, that's his question. Uh, definitive, not definitively, yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I thought it was strange we had nothing in technology when I came in and looked at it because I, I've been dealing with this stuff for many, many years. They've always had technology. And you have you have costs like software. You you have a software upgrade that I'm predicting is going to ha happen. It's going to be fifty thousand dollars for the town. I could be wrong, but you know, and, at and some point you have to put money away for this stuff. Uh, Gene, Gene has a comment. So, Carl, to answer your question, these yeah. are questions I asked when yeah. I first attended the very first committee meeting. There yeah. are no clear rules. Okay. I can tell you, coming from a perspective of corporations and companies, yeah. large yes. investment yes. items like your servers are absolutely part of your capital plan. Yeah. Things yes. like your recurring items, your computers, mm -hmm. your things that are more regular daily yeah. business are not. Yeah. But because a server is such a significant investment, mm -hmm. typically that is something that is included on your capital plan. So it was a question I asked when I got in here because I was told the, the this $5,000 value, one, I questioned them why a sub pub was on there <laughs> for well <laughs> under that. And then why weren't big things like your technology, you know, Phone systems, you don't have to buy as often. I would argue, probably wouldn't worry about that. Servers are an every four-year investment. That is something that should be on your capital plan. And, 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 because a, company it's, be it's a, and a company would be, would be depreciating it. Correct. So yeah. therefore, therefore there's a capital item. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, even a phone system. It would, talk, it would be. Yeah, it's just, it's just those tend to last a long time, right. so that's it's the, not, it's not as critical. Too, but I know it's, it's true, and that, that's yeah. why I asked a lot of these questions. We know we're going to have to replace it because it was very confusing to me when I looked at the capital plan because there were a lot of things missing like that mm -hmm. that were items that I knew were due for replacement yeah. that were well, on no radar. They aren't on in an operating budget, and they weren't in the capital plan. It, it's an, it's evolved. Okay, because I, I was around when we first started it, and you know, yeah. we didn't have them when I first got oh, no. Yeah. So you know, we've made it work, and we've evolved, and we work on it, and items get added, and some get taken away. But the basic and concept is it's pretty clearly good. Defined. And this is an example of what getting at yeah, because it's that, now right. different set of eyes right. looking at it, saying, yeah. "Hey, maybe right. we should have these items on there." Yeah. Well, things change too because back in the day, you know, you might have one computer here, and everybody's sharing it. 
now you have a server and everybody has the terminal. In, in all yeah. fairness, the town did a major right. upgrade to the IT infrastructure in 2019. Right. We're now at the first time when at, at the point that we need to now yeah. buy that new server. So you yeah. didn't have it before 2019. I know. So there's a reason why it right. wasn't on the radar. Yeah. It didn't exist. Yeah. So now at this point that we're looking to replace right. it, this is when it's on the radar. And hey, yeah. let's make a tweak to the point. And it's a high cost items. item. It's yeah. And I, I want to add to that that normally what happens if you if you're not putting it in the capital, you're putting in your operational. Yeah. Operational money disappears every year. Right. It goes in if you have money left over. It goes into the reserve fund. If it's if it's not if you don't have if you have shortages, then sometimes people will come in and rob that money and put it into another account to help balance it out. Wow. So if you don't put it in capital and your costs are going to be fifty thousand dollars or sixty thousand dollars coming, you know, in, in four or five or ten years, you're not going to have money set aside for it. And the whole reason for capital budget is to set aside money for costly, expensive things. Some things last a long time, some things don't. But that's, that's the way that that's the way things are, are that's changing. That's what can do this. Right. So it's always a best guess. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Of course. But it's anticipated. Yeah. So the money's in the bank, so to speak. Right. So yeah. what does it mean? We're talking tens of thousands of dollars for a server. What does it mean on page three when the server is in there for $1,000 under long-term reserve budget? That, that's the yearly money that we put in this year. It, there was nothing put away last year. Now we're putting 1000 away. Is it enough? No. But do we want to make a sustainable budget level of 2%? That's the way to do it. Got it. Thank yeah. you. 2% 2 again, we can add 2,000 to the server. And the server, is, you, know, you can get rid of the line server and just put technology in because your phone systems and, and all this stuff, you got software and everything else is all included in there. That And, and yes, it's all capitalized. Uh, and, and so it, it all go, it should be into the capital budget. Well, it looks yeah. like the phone system is in there. Is that not true? It says electric slash phone. Well, the whole electric thing was is a misnomer too. I mean, I think we're tweaking we're tweaking this budget, but that was there before. It's not something that we we adjusted or dealt with, right? Okay. No. Okay. Any, any Good. more questions? Clarifying. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you, Ed. Thank I you, guys. Yeah, I think we're going to move to the next item. We're running pretty late. Uh, we, don't, we don't vote on this. This gets put into the budget and we vote on yeah. that. And we vote on that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is this part of our yeah. painstaking mini month long process of constructing the budget for the voters to approve. Them. Good. Thank you. March. Okay. So the next agenda item, I'm going to move, keep moving on here, is the town treasury report, October 31st, 2023, monthly financial reporting package. I have a quick, quick question. How was the tax collection? Was it was it it went smoothly? There was there was there a lot of oh yeah. Does it look like a lot of people didn't pay just off the top of your head? Or I have not found an update on that. The ones the let maybe as a result of the letters that were sent. No, no. We just the, t the taxes that were just the oh, oh, other yeah. day. I wondered whether oh. there's any sort of idea of whether right how the taxes are coming in yeah or the, how they came in and now yeah. they're the right. just, just curious on whether whether it was yeah. whether it was a normal or whether oh, yeah. it looks like there might be it's a little early people. usually to be okay i don't know that but i don't know but that's okay so we'll ask it. okay <laughs> yeah, hopefully i'll remember next year not well, that next month not that same question next month maybe might have an answer next yeah year. Uh, so, are there any red flags in the account? Really. No. Yes. Kind of vanilla. <laughs> You're getting the vanilla meat. Yeah, this, this is not chunky monkey. <laughs> uh, okay. Yep. And... The treasurer is happy to look at what reports are provided to you and what you would like to see. This is the same package you've gotten. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how yeah. long, but it's good. If you yeah. want to revisit the data that's provided, she's happy to do that.
and what he was. Was my stand my standing comment. <laughs> what that? My standing comment. Let's buy more T bills and CDs. Well, that's so good to me. Yeah, we can move to the next item if no one's got any questions. Sure. Okay. Um, so time trade report done. Discussion and request to discontinue right away on parcel 10 024.000. So we got some information mm -hmm. for our town attorney. town attorney. Yeah. So a bit more succinct than yes. what we had gotten from VLC. Yeah. Mm. So who would review the town records? That sounds like step one. Is that something the attorney would do? Good question. I don't know. No, what the, I think what they're what I, I my opinion on this would be reviewing the town records to determine all persons entitled to notice. It'd be any yeah. abutters to that property mm. that would yeah. have right of way. Yeah. Um, their property going under that road or, or yeah and that's what they want to find out but that's pretty easy to do just to look at the back but yeah mm -hmm. you can pull up a list of abutters yeah before we start the process so, select board will pass a motion to initiate the process to discontinue the town highway and set a time and date for examining the premises and hearing the person's interests so that's the first thing that we would have to do is to start the process um, well, I think number one is probably the first thing, and uh, I'm not sure I heard an answer, John, to uh, Seth's question about who would do the review of the the records. Well, you can have your attorney do it, but it doesn't involve going and looking at town records and having like a title search or anything like that. You just look for a list of people. The potters, well, it includes mortgages, lien holders, holders of life oh. estates is what he says. Oh, I know, I know, I, I understand. So it sounds like more than just looking at a map. Some, some attorneys do that. They go and they look at, uh, they notify all the banks and everything, uh -huh. but not all attorneys do that. Uh -huh. They call this a town highway. Huh? That's what it's treated yeah. as. Mm -hmm. yeah. It isn't a highway. It's a trail. Right. And that's a legal highway. Yeah. It's a, a 10 mile travel width. Okay. A ten, I mean, a 10 foot travel width in the mm -hmm. right, in a right way. It maintains the same right of way as a road. Okay. So a mortgagee would be someone that had. Cool. A mortgage on the property abutting, or that the land the the legal sure. went across that land. Like if somebody owns some some money and the person who owns the money has some stake in the claim. In the, yeah, right. But that would be a mortgagee on the property that the trail passed through, or a bus, or a bus. So I guess the answer, looking at this, I would just say you know to to make sure you cross all your T's and dot all your I's mm -hmm. and have your town attorney do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but okay. If you want, so I guess we don't need a motion. I guess we would need a motion to do that. Yeah, if you want to have the town so. attorney do it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so I'd say so too. So that would be step number one. Yeah, because we we have the attorney do it. We don't have the staff to do that. No, so we'd have to have the attorney review the town records. Yeah, and establish and apply this criteria to the um, search. And, and this way, you find out from law, you know. From that review, you find out um, who has an interest in this road. Who might there might be some people out there saying, "No, we want to keep it as a as a trail mm -hmm. because it allows us to have access to our camp or our our land or mm -hmm. uh, or it makes a little property more valuable." Because once you do away with the right of way, anything that's connected to that specifically connected to that right of way um, won't have a right of way anymore. You can't landlock land in Vermont either. It's it's, it's against the law at this point for mm -hmm. anybody to take a road away so the roads. So the park becomes landlocked. Um, so there might be some. Ish, I doubt there is, but there might be some. I don't think there is situation there. Yeah, yeah. I doubt. I don't it. believe there is. I mean, my touch on that right away. I mean, I have a point. I probably touch a lot. But, uh, so anyway, uh, so I guess the first thing we would know is need is a motion to have the town attorney um, review the town records. Well, I'll make a motion and we authorize the town attorney. Um, would that be Jim Barlow? Yeah, yeah. To um, to review the town records to determine all persons and abutters to the right of way that was, which is a legal trail at this point. 
um, that was known as Wheeler Road. Yeah, so I'm uncomfortable having a determination about its legal status included in the motion. I didn't I say that. I don't think it's necessary. I didn't say it. I just said, well, it is a legal trail. Well, I don't. I don't think we know that. Uh, well, so it's, it's, on, it's, it's on, a, on the state highway maps. It's, it's a, a legal trail. It's a right of way. And is it a class four highway? Is a legal trail? I don't. I, yeah. Do well, we know that? We can just say the town right away. Well, yeah. when when it's as, as called wheel road, and yeah. and not. I'm just going to say this one time. When you look at the state highway map, it's mm -hmm. created by V Trans, mm -hmm. um, and V Trans were the ones that were driving, ending, or at first discovering all these ancient roads. Yeah. And then V Trans brought it to an end. When they tell you your road is a class three road, a class one road, a class two road or a legal trail, that determination is made. And you get funding or you don't get funding based on that. So from my looking at that map from VTrans, which is the, the latest map that they produce, it's a legal trail. But if you want to go further, ask the attorney to check into it. it he already called it a legal trail. I know it's a legal trail. Right, it's a legal trail. It's okay. actually in his email. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've been I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. Then ten years. Okay. So, you know what you're doing? so you have the motion. I think I do. <laughs> I think you do too. So. Uh, I have the recording in any case. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but, but actually, before we vote on it, uh, it'd be good to hear it again. Let's hear it one more time. Yeah. To give up, ask the attorney to look into the town records to determine the abiders. Uh, and etc. Yes, yes. In so area. those who have an interest, do they have an interest in the lands? Yeah. In discontinuing the legal trail. That's no, I don't. We uh, we just want them to. We just want the the the, the attorney to review town records to to determine all the butters and anyone else who has a who has an interest in in. in Right. We're, we're the legal trail called. Why, why don't we use his language to determine all the persons entitled to notice of the discontinuance yeah. hearing in the site? Yeah, right. perfect. Okay. Perfect. We don't, we're not making a, a, a right. decision here. Okay. No. We are making a decision to have the town attorney look into right. it. Right. But not okay. showing our hand. So we have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a second. We do. Is, is there further discussion? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I. I'll, I'll just continue what my theme from last time, which is this is a request from a property owner for a favor from the town, basically. And I'm a little uncomfortable that we're just going ahead and spending town funds on an attorney doing this. Uh, but you know, I heard you guys say last time that you want to do it that way, and and I'll go along with it. But I'm and and um, I, I just want to register. I'm a little uncomfortable with it. And I want to just add to it too. It, it's funny when I'm a town manager, I was um, I hated the thought of giving up any of our rights away mm -hmm. as a town because for the most part they're they're an asset, but they can be a liability too. And and then I just want to say that um, many times why these roads become legal trails is because their cost exceeds their value. Mm -hmm. um, so um, and in this case, I'm kind of torn between saying let's keep it. And, and wants to get rid of it. The only other thing I want to say about keeping it is what's happened in the past, in my experience, is when you have a legal trail and the town has no responsibility to maintain that trail, but you, you do have hydraulic issues, which I don't know if that's been ironed out or not, but it's, it's a legal trail. You have transition of staff. You know, you hire new zoning administrators. You get new people on board. They sometimes do not see the fact that you can't allow people to build in those areas because mm -hmm. um, um, on a legal trail, because they built on a legal trail and they started driving on it. Yeah. Next, you know what they're doing? They're telling us that we have to fix it. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened in our group. The Buffalo Mountain Trail was a legal trail for a reason. And then people started building on it. And then they got three camps there and they seen they got another house up there. Mm -hmm. And now everybody wants to road maintain, but the town doesn't want to do it. And it's, it's a thorn in your side forever after mm -hmm. that. So there are liabilities, there are issues surrounding that sort of thing with keeping it and with doing away with it. But the town only has the responsibility for hydraulic issues on a class four road in a trail, but they do not have responsibility to maintain. I know that. They and yeah, right. They, 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 the hydraulics and bridges and culverts. Yeah, just hydraulics. But not for a legal trail. So when you're talking about 
the problems with people building on it. You're talking about people building along it and using it as the right, right of way rather than, because I was also thinking right. in this place where it just goes right through a piece of property. I mean, someone could conceivably build on it, put a house oh, on top solid, of yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I don't think it can. Well, uh, they can't. From a zoning point perspective, I know of a legal trail in Mass 4 Road that's I, been used. But I don't think it was legal. But once the zoning administrator makes that decision, I know. builds a house there. Yeah. yeah. Unless you're really aware of it. Yeah. And if the house is built, it's over with. You can't go back. Yeah. And yeah, I and know that's that happened on Buffalo Mountain Trail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's three places there now. Yeah. Well, I can think of a class four road in town actually that has houses on. But class four road, you can do that. Yeah. <laughs> But it, the town has never been consulted on this particular road as far as the hydraulic right. issues goes. Culverts have been put in, this has been put in. But, you know, it's not, no one oversees the right. legality of that process. Right. I guess they didn't hire it, but. No, we did after, we're just too late. Yeah. Un uncalled. But, but you didn't have to maintain it. All you had to do was take care of the culvert. I know, but you have people coming to your meetings every three or four months yelling and screaming because the road's a mess. Well. And they think that we we're going to, yeah, we were going to address all this. Mm. So you can't. But anyway, I just don't want you guys to get into a situation where you may sometime down the road you may be asked to maintain that right, that road if you keep it. If you get rid of it, mm -hmm. then you may somebody's going to come along maybe sometime and say, "Look, we wish that was a trail." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, on well, our point, I think it, the the attorney's costs have been fairly minimal. So far, is that, is that accurate? Mm -hmm. We we, we had yeah. brought that up last time that even yeah. though, yeah, I, I don't disagree with Carl's point. Yeah. We're doing we're doing a, a good thing for the for the citizens. Not I think, we're doing it for everybody. I think we're doing it for the abutters. We're doing it for people who have interest okay. in the property. Okay. And we're either going to take it off the list and mm -hmm. not have to maintain it at all. I mean, we don't have to maintain it now, but we don't have to take liability for it, or else we decide to keep it. And, yeah, it's just for the benefit of the public. It is in the town's interest that we dot our eyes across our T's. It is it is a liability. Yeah, it's from my experience with this particular spot, it's a liability. Uh, and it's not, it doesn't look like an asset to me, but you can, we can go look at it and you can see. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, I'm just yeah. trying to play both sides. No, no, I, and I'm just, yeah, yeah, whatever. Okay. <laughs> so we have a motion. We had a second. We have had discussion. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Yeah. I feel okay. that you're aye. I do have. It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I wanted to say that I was uncomfortable with it, uh, but I went along last time as well. Uh, uh, so the next point. thing we have. It's consideration of engineering firms. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And? So you have two documents yeah. provided from two rather large firms, um, local firms. The way they can't go up, I think a lot larger than the wall. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, the prices so the, are similar. Yeah, they're very similar, yeah. which is kind of what you would expect um it's like gas prices they, but, they, uh, they know everybody's prices right you know i mean i think both guthrie and i have heard positive about both of these yeah both of these terms so i think the question is what what does the select board want to do next steps do you want me to invite these firms here for you to maybe meet with them do, based on your previous knowledge of them is there one in particular that i think it worked with dewolf on the fire station for some issues i think it was dewolf their office is right down here in fairmont and anything like that was a good fit at that point well and then the, and the, a person one of the owners was, was with a college yeah he was right mm -hmm. and the person i worked with now was one of the people that was at the site visit mm -hmm. today, yeah. uh, Joel. Well, yeah. I think he was working for them. Du Bois and King, their office is in South Burlington, but I haven't worked with them in a while. I don't yeah. know who their engineers are, but they they employ people who live far away from South Burlington. They may have someone who- I think they're right off too. Okay. I think that's where they started out, okay. right off. I mean, they're both gonna charge for mileage anyway, but- mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not what it's to right. How about the um, the town network? Uh, what are the possibilities of checking out with uh, fellow town um, administrators, seeing what experience they've had with these two companies? I mean, I don't personally know a lot of town mm -hmm. administrators. Um, VLCT, I know. Um, 
I mean, there are there are list serves. I know Guthrie, the, a neighboring town, has been working with DeWolf, and they've wow. recently engineered some projects for them. So he had actually asked me if they had submitted because he had heard some really good things about okay. them. So, okay. I mean, I think if we find out, I think reaching out, we're just going to find out that both of these are probably pretty solid. Yeah, I would firms. expect. So, I think so. My past experience, but yeah. I don't have recent past experience. With them. I, I, I don't know what's I don't think so. I mean, I think you just, I think the wolf is quite accessible, very local. We've worked with them before. Is, is I kind of lean that way myself. And yeah, Guthrie just happened to get some, again, some feedback from two projects they very recently engineered. Yeah. I forget which two. The blows the cluster somewhat the same. Yeah. Right. I just, what, what sort of, I, uh, so we don't need anybody at the moment. We'll we will up on the. We tech. We have projects for FEMA. We need to get started. Sander Circle being one. Right. Um, yeah. Sander Circle's the least complicated. Sodom Pond has potential historic mm -hmm. implications. So I'm trying to get from FEMA right now. I meet with FEMA on Wednesday, but um, how we can't start designing anything until we know the historical implication of that stone culvert. So. We don't know whether that culvert needs to stay and we have to engineer something around it. So, um, but Sander Circle's definitely the first one. Yeah. Now, who would we get for the hydraulics then? Is that something they do or the state's going to do? Or They would be able to do. They would do it? Yeah. Because I know that has to happen. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. So, I'd say we could build a new wolf myself. What sort of commitment are, are we making? We say yes to either of these is is just on a case by case basis. Yeah, that's that's how we had drafted a contract with Chase and Chase. It was okay. basically on a we, project by project, project by project basis. Well, so we're just testing the the only, waters. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. we might be it. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. again, as you all know, in past. You all picked up the phone and called D Doug Newton yeah. when yeah. you needed engineering. True. Yeah. Right now, we don't have anyone that we can pick up the phone and call. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, we have contacts at the state, of course, but you yeah. know, if they're stretched thin, they can't necessarily do right. what Doug was doing. Yeah. <laughs> the state may have given Doug or agreed upon certain parameters, and then Doug was the one that designed your culvert, <laughs> created the drawings, engineered everything. We yeah. don't currently have that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, for some of these projects, and I need to check this with FEMA, I'm not sure if we will need to specifically RFP. I know we will need to RFP the construction of them. Oh, yeah. The engineering, usually you don't have to go that route because okay. um, a lot of towns have an engineer that they're kind of working with. But you yeah. around when you build your town garage? Because it says hardwood town garage that they worked on. Were you involved in that at all? Um, on, on just on some of their industrial what warehouse. It, what's the date? What's the date on? They don't have a date. Um, the, the town of garage, in my, but my knowledge, the town of garage that we built was built by Lodge and S, and it wasn't it wasn't engineered by any of the engine by any of those. Oh, I don't know. They said that they designed and had construction oversight of a cast in place concrete foundation for the garage. Oh, so they must have done it through Lodge and S. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's they didn't. I did everything through Lodge and S. Lodge and S was a GC, so they probably okay. handled them as a contractor. Right. So they did that. And that's who's that? Was that uh, the voice of King? That was the wolf. Oh, the wolf. Yeah. Dewolf. Okay. Yeah. I I have experience only because I saw the I've had experience with 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 uh, the voice of King too, but I just don't want. I don't need to talk about it publicly. Publicly. Mm -hmm. So they're a big company, though. One thing that, yeah. that and I'm not sure if the wolf handles. Um, the uh, geotechnical work or not, but I do I did see, which is nice that we looked in the, at uh, Du Bois and King. They do geotechnical work, and we're going to need that for the town garage. Yeah. So we're working already. So we could hire them, or we could hire the Wolf, depending on what their 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 uh, I think abilities are. Does do that, but I'm not positive. No, we should ask that. That's yeah. what we should. At least yeah. we know that someone does do that. Mm -hmm. Just for those people who are listening who might not know what geotechnical work is, could you please explain? Well, it's it, with the um, like where we want to do the garage. Part of that is on um, the, anecdotally, there it's on it's on um, ledge, but there's other parts of the garage that are on fill. Okay. So what they want to do is they want to they'll drill down, they'll yeah. check the soils down to a certain depth, 
based on how heavy the building's expected to be, and they'll try to find some bedrock or something to attach the building to. So they need yeah. to do that. Okay. Well, they're checking the density of the soil on if it will, you know, yeah. be able to not not settle or et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Yeah. I was just asking for a friend. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> so I know that um uh let's see who did I can't remember who did that was it two boys? Yeah. No. Yeah, one of yeah, they did that over at the fire station. Mm. Drilled down and yeah. mm. so so anyway, for the ongoing projects, we need to pick somebody right now. Like the culverts and things like yeah. that. Yeah. It's sort of better. Yeah. No, I mean it's fine. Let's just do it. Well what's the point of delay? Yeah. What's the point of delay? Yeah. No, there isn't any point. I'm I, just wondering, we should just make a motion? Or I don't think we need to. I think we can do this by consensus. I'm, that yeah. I would be fine with hiring either one of these companies. I would do. Yeah. And I would just say, you know, if they have an expertise, we need to use a few of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what did you say? If they have an expertise, we need to use uh -huh. and just use them. We'll, take, we'll use that company that has that particular expertise. So are you suggesting that we punt the decision to someone, to Gina, to decide well, who to pick up in the phone and call at any time? Is that all right, Gina? You got two companies you can call. It makes it, it would make my life a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I that's fine with me. Yeah. It's I mean I would clearly work with Guthrie on. Yeah. Guthrie yeah. It would be a joint effort yeah. between right. Guthrie and I certainly. And they got I know Good Boys and Kings has extensive uh, past experiences working with water and wastewater and everything else. I mean that's where yeah. this all started from. I think uh, one of the criteria is kind of the availability. You know, as yeah. we, if we're on a Let's we need to get a job done. Yeah. We need to reach out to both. Hey, when can you do this? Yeah. And yeah. either one. If they can yeah, do it, a good point. If we can do it soon, hire that one. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. That's it's like six months. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm thinking. And both these companies are a lot bigger than than uh Pace and Chase. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sounds good to me. Perfect. Um preliminary discussion on 2024 town meeting warning. Just Kind of a yeah. wrap of the warning for your review. Kind of like a boiler point. It's like yeah. you just did this last year. We're gonna we're gonna see this every meeting now, yeah. between now and the end of January. So yeah. oh, okay. then you're gonna start Hopefully you don't have any problems with it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like so yeah. as we start getting answers to these questions, like when we start meeting with organizations, when we and then the numbers okay. will get filled in. Um yeah. the budgets number I last year at least left blank until you approve that number, but you will be meeting like the next meeting, one organization because they can't come to the following meeting that's on here for a voted article will be coming and addressing the select board. So as long as you bring that up, so the next select board meeting is pretty important. I'm start talking about budget. No, I'm asking you. I'm gonna be in California. Oh, but I'll be my daughter has okay, something so to do. I, I mean I could I could be remote. It's if, December 4th, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, no, no. no, it's the, no, it's the, it's the one after that. Oh, so we'll, we'll talk about next. We'll talk about next. Okay, the eighteenth. You're saying you won't be here? Yes, I'll be yes. in California, but I can I can pull in. I just was curious. No. Yeah. So that we'll one see. will have the majority of the organizations that will be for the voted articles. The only reason one organization okay. is coming next meeting is okay. because they could not come to that one. But, um, but if we don't do the final vote in the town meeting until January. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll we'll talk about that next. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I can be on the meeting for a couple of weeks. Okay. Sounds good. I, I, All right. Thanks. Um, so, uh, oh yeah, the warning. Is there? So this is. Yeah. To Carl's point, this is your first yeah. view of it. Yeah. So you're going to see it again next meeting. There's nothing specific in there, really. No, so. no there's not. This okay, is... so I'm going to move to the next one. Well, just, so... just a, I want clarification. Um, there's like Article 9, 10, 11, they have X dollar. Uh, yeah. shouldn't, should, shouldn't all the dollar amounts be X'd out at this point? Have we made any decisions? Some I've received and some, no, you haven't made any decisions yeah, okay. yet. Okay. If I had the information on what they've submitted, then I put it in here. Okay. So in some cases, I haven't gotten all of that yet. Okay. So okay. that's what I was, it's all placeholders at this point. Got it. So the Four Quarters School House Association, just to pick yeah. on them, yeah. they already have requested 45 hours. Well, theirs is kind of the same every year. Yeah. yeah. They, did, they don't usually make a formal request, so. Okay. 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 Or at least they told me they that's the way it works. Um, okay. 
So the next item is preliminary discussion on FY 2025 budget development. So really, this is just, do you have anything specific you want me to think about, look at? I've started the file, but until I have time to actually sit with the road foreman, sit with the town clerk, I did not want to bring numbers yet. I've calculated staffing costs, but I have not double checked myself yet. So I did not want to bring that to you yet. So if there's anything specific, you have any guidance you want to give me, that's what this is on here for tonight. Hmm. Do the same thing you did last year. Okay. <laughs> that's what I'm working on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it worked out all right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can't think you of will see a draft specific next at this point. I mean, there may week. be some questions as you move along, you know. Mm -hmm. but, oh yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Once you start actually, yeah. Right. And data is trickling in now. Yeah. So I got the well, yeah. you technically got it, but I the regional planning, for example, yeah. I got their number. So yeah. all these types of things are coming in right now. Right. Of, here's your here's your budget number from yeah. the LCT. Yeah. Here's, yeah, yeah. So right. I can't think of anything too. Yeah, not until we see more figures. Okay. Okay. Um, Eight forty-five appointment, emergency planning committee, Jennifer Zollner. So it's actually only Jennifer Zollner. I misunderstood that the energy committee was ready to appoint someone. They were only asking the question of if they could. So they're not ready yet. To, okay. <laughs> to do that, but um, the emergency planning committee does have a new I'll member that would like to join. Okay. Do we have any documentation from her? No. We I believe she first. started attending the meetings and okay. asked to be an official member of the committee. Yes. The committee's been meeting. I make a motion stuff. to um, appoint from the Emergency Planning Committee member Jennifer Zolder. Mm -hmm. Second. Any further discussion? All of the favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. So unless you wanted to deliberate, but I thought we could. <laughs> so we've got warrants. We've also got a personnel matter. I want to talk about the building removal down in route two. Uh, we could fit that in. Right now. So shouldn't we start looking into doing that? If we could use ARPA money for that. What was it? The bit? The building on route two that um, the Hudson Hill. living in. Uh, yeah, because that's okay. kind of a mess, kind of, should be cleaned up. Can you provide some guidance on who to contact? Well, you have to call the state. You, you got to get the asbestos thing cleared up first. You have to have that. They have a list assessment. Of you have to have an assessment made. They have a list of people that do that. Yeah. Environmental agency. Why not? Well, it's just a phone call. I think that, I don't know what the uh, agency is, but I know they have to come in and do it. Uh, yeah, hire a contractor. To do that. Yeah. Is the building being remediated or? The building would be taken down. But then you have to get an estimate for that. But you can't do anything until you get the asbestos thing question cleared up. The committed sample. Yep. So I, I don't know who the... What is the time frame that you're looking at for this? I don't know. You know, it's something we could use ARPA money for, so mm -hmm. we should think I'm about it. I'm fitting it into everything. That's why I'm asking. Well, you can wait till after budget development or... Okay. That'd Whatever. Be but I, I, all, the only thing I was thinking of was calling whoever we had to call and get the assessment going for the asbestos. Because okay. I know we had to do that first. So that's all. Okay. Yeah. Department of Health will have that list. Well, I would like that building dealt with sooner versus later because when yeah. we speak about liability. I know. Right. That's so, why I'm bringing it up. Like, yeah. So the first step is to get the asbestos assessment. Okay. So done. Department of Health? All right. Yeah. I'll look at that. That's all I have to say on that. So what is, speaking of liability, what is the uh, the state of the building in terms of ac potential access to it? I have locked, never been inside of it. Locked up tight as a drum? I don't know how it got through that, but I, I do know, know there's a vehicle there. Some of his stuff's still there, I think. It look like, or is I've that actually asked not to rush to move some of that stuff. Okay. It looks like someone's there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So to me, it mitigates. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hopefully the doors are locked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you want him to leave that stuff there? Well, it I just, looks... I told him 
it's not the worst thing that okay. people driving by may think yeah. that someone is there. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. And then what do we, what's the vacant land going to be? Well, we have to make that decision. Okay. But, um, Doesn't it allow access to the property out back? Yeah. Well, there was access out back, but the right away was never really cleared up. There was a lot of different parcels all there together, and there is a access to the cemetery back there, but we didn't really we were sure whose hand it was. So the opportunity came up to buy it, plus VTRAN needed um, – a right of way for the culvert that was put across there and a bunch mm -hmm. of stuff they need to be signed off or people wouldn't do it, blah, blah, blah. So mm -hmm. now the town is there. So now we could do uh, you know, small town list building Ooh, there to, to keep the Kubota in yeah, or the piece of machine we use for sidewalks. <laughs> there is discussion in the fire station for putting an addition on there. So maybe we could store our stuff over there blah 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 so no. okay yeah yeah but it needs to be cleared up preliminary right yeah it needs to be cleared up yes but you think the house is a tear down yes yeah 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 i mean yeah yeah i mean what bruce wanted to do was put a, a house habitat humanity on the project there which was actually a pretty good idea but then I heard that wasn't on the table anymore, so I don't really know. But mm. we can look into something like that. Mm. But yeah. if we build anything there, do we lose the right of way? No, I mean you could craft it so we still have the right of way yeah. and clear okay. up the right of way issues. Yeah. Good. But, yeah. So it's actually two lots, kind of, because the old town uh, hall was there mm -hmm. on the far side, and then there was the house lot. But okay. see, the house people they tried to claim that lot next to it under adverse possession yeah they took can't adverse possession the town anyway yeah. well they they certainly tried they took the town to court <laughs> and you know and that got thrown out and so that yeah. was good but then now we own it so we actually own the two lots there yeah yeah shouldn't even go to court the state you can't adverse state property you can't adversely possess town property yeah, and that never really came up it's like they couldn't really prove that um you know because you have to prove that we Neglected it, and they were we maintaining it. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's but the they couldn't prove that. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, they did do it. I mean, they well, got, they can do we it. got a way to anybody can sue anyway. Yeah, it doesn't mean it's going to go yeah. anywhere. So anyway, uh, that was all I wanted to say on that. Okay. On that, I don't. Holy cow, that was like a half an hour. You're prolonging the acting, sir. <laughs> Look, so, I mean, I mean, so I'm laughing about it. <laughs> okay, I mean, should I take a nap? <laughs> yeah. That's up to you. Uh, okay, what's the next? We have the warrants. Um, and we're going to do the personnel matter at the end? Yeah. Okay. okay. In the uh, warrants set, you have some payroll stuff there to sign. And then there's also, it's a policy that you approved a few meetings ago when the rec board came. It's a cash oh, receipt nah. policy. Oh, right. We forgot to sign that okay. that night. So yep. that's there. So that's, well, that's there. People to there. circulate with the warrant so that's to, to get signed as well. Yeah. Oh, it's that, John, too much right there. I just didn't want to forget that. Somebody has effective advertising. I'm just looking at the line item for AFLAC and thinking about a duck. <laughs> Here. And now I'm hearing. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And for the TA report, uh, there were no permit applications since your last meeting. Um, and then just to update those that did not attend the site visit this morning at the town garage, but we had eight firms that's awesome show up really to um, yeah, it was crazy to tour wow. the site. That's cool, I thought we were gonna have anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then I went outside and there's a lot of people out there. We're supposed to stop. <laughs> I mean, we're supposed to be signing complaints that we were. No, he just. Oh, I know. Uh, Wayne too soon. Here. Yeah, I said, don't worry about it. Nobody shows up, we'll do it again. You had that's, that's a word of wisdom. Huh? I knew what was gonna happen. <laughs> You did well. I expected we get <laughs> no. It was really good. Wow, it was great. It's actually, exciting. it's really yeah. it's exciting. It was really good. Really and there were really good people there and asked really good questions. And it, it was way well, better than I thought it was, was going to be. It'll be cheaper than we. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you know, but, until the twenty second to get questions to us, and then we have until yeah, the competition. That doesn't mean shit. 
No, we just have these qualifications and people who are we can trust that we can do a good job and negotiate the program. Right, the line, of course, and build eventually. So yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. No, let's just get it designed. <laughs> Put it on a shelf. I've seen that yeah. before. Yeah, it happens a lot, actually. That's you good. No. Did you sign the warrant? No, you didn't sign the warrant. Yeah. I didn't either. Oh, I think you should save that pen and let um, Seth sign all the documents for that. That's the pen payroll. I use when I go hey. for the payroll every week. <laughs> every other week. <laughs> it's one of those that, you know, if you didn't want your pen stolen, you'd have That's it. yours, Seth. Right. Yeah, okay. That envelope. Yeah, I can see it. It has my name in there. I'm like, it looks like it's mine. <laughs> okay. So, so there you go. I find those. You've been one. here all day. Mm -hmm. You've been here all day. Mm -hmm. A long day. No, I was at the town garage. So this Wait, this, I'm just this can go down. I didn't know you said. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. That's good. This is fine. No, you well, don't have to, I don't have to sign that. No. Nope. That that's done. Okay. I just need my policy. Um, so the town administrator report? You need a pen? We're done. We're pen. We're all done with it? Okay. You need a pen? No, I'm good. That is pen. Oh, Actually, thanks. I'll take it back because I have to give that back to Michelle so it can be for next payroll. Yes. So she'll ask me, where's my pen? <laughs> um, so I guess we're just going to do the personnel now. Mm -hmm. I yeah. move to enter executive session to discuss the personnel matter at um, 846. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I appear to have it. They do have it. Uh, we are exiting the executive session at 907. And no decisions were made. And no decisions were made. Mr. Hess. I would like to make a motion to um, compensate. Offer uh, compensation. Uh, oh, I would offer compensation to note takers of the DRB, the Planning Commission, or the Select Board. And or. And or the se Select Board. <laughs> May I take um, you? I can't hear you. I just, can you hear me? We're working on it. Can you tell us when you can hear us, please, Deb? I just heard you, Carl. Okay, great. Okay, <clears throat> I'm making a motion um, to offer compensation to the minute takers, offer compensation to the minute takers of the DRB, um, Planning Commission, or Select Board uh, for the minute takers. That's my motion. Of those three boards. Of those three boards. Yes. Anything uh, else? Can can you be more specific about the amount of compensation when you make a motion like that? Because as an auditor, I'm supposed to read all the select board minutes and money matters that you vote on are numbers I'm supposed to check against what's actually happening, and I don't know what the number is. At the going rate, do we? Which is what? It was either 21 an hour. It's we have a rate in the budget. Yeah. Yeah. At the budgeted rate. Yes. At the budgeted rate. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get we'll get to those, but whatever. Um, She's the honor. She knows where the budget is. <laughs> <laughs> what the the, pr the previous note taker? Um, it would be her compensation. Minute taker. Minute taker. Minute taker. I take. Right, <laughs> Does that satisfy your question? It does satisfy your question. Well, if I went if I went back and mined the minutes from when you set the compensation and it's somewhere in the minutes, then that would satisfy me. Yeah. I'm trying to rely on the minutes for a lot of this information. And sometimes I find that there's just references to things that are vague like that, or it'll say, you know. Gina will get you the, present. Gina, you'll be able to, or Michelle will get you the exact number. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Right. thank you. Thank you. Well, also, are you guys planning to vote on articles that are going into that draft warning as you go? Because I can build the town report you know, as you go. But I mean, for example, the funding request committee, all those numbers were filled in. Have you actually accepted those numbers yet? No. No. Okay. This is a very rough draft. <coughs> Do I make a motion? Sorry. For what? Oh, wait. 
Compensation for... You made the motion. Tapers. I made the motion. Do we have a second? Thank you. Second it. Second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Did you say aye? I'm recusing myself. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Motion the, the adjourned. Eye, the ayes do have it. <laughs> <laughs> motion adjourned. <laughs> motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.